and uh, uh, sorry, folks, for starting a little bit late. Technical issues with with Blab. There are some things that are going on in the background with Blab that I don't know. I don't understand. But the screen has changed, and uh, they're responsible to me is they've they're working on some issues and they will return the normal screens um, when they're done working on them so anyway uh, let's let's start tonight's uh, conversation I'd like to introduce uh, Rosalind Sadaka and I Rosalind I would like to let you introduce yourself um, and tell tell our folks uh, who you are and what you do and uh, we'll rock and roll from there sounds like a plan thank you I'm Rosalind Sedeca. I'm a relationship and dating coach and mentor, and I specialize in talking to people who are 40 and over because that's a unique world that we all are in. It means we bring experience to our relationships. We've, we've been around for a while. We have had some breakups and heartaches and joys and, and love experiences. And life is different than when we were in our 20s and 30s. And so this is an area that I, I bring experience and wisdom to and one in which I can help people because I think we get very jaded as we get older, as we focus on love and relationships. And so we need a boost and we need a reminder that we are very valuable and that what we bring to a relationship is really worthwhile. And so I wanna share some, what I call big truths and important information, especially about ways that we inadvertently sabotage our relationships when we're single in midlife and ways we could catch ourselves so that we don't repeat those patterns and get ourselves stuck in unproductive relationships or, or needless loneliness. And so the real big truth that I want everyone to really contemplate is we don't really fall in love with our partner. We fall in love with who we want them to be. And there's a difference, I'm gonna repeat that. We don't fall in love with our partner, we fall in love with who we want them to be the promise of the relationship, of the romance, the way we're going to feel when we're in that relationship, what's gonna happen for us and to us, the magic, the wonder, the glory. Everyone loves to be in love. And what happens when we understand that we're really falling in love with who we want them to be is that the reality is we set ourselves up for failure in a relationship because that's going to set us up for inevitable disappointment. Because few people can ever live up to the expectations that we have when we're entering a relationship. We put too much of an emotional burden on a partner and too much of a charge on them. And there's so many hopes and dreams that we have that we want them to fulfill for us. And inevitably, no one can live up to that. And so we start relationships almost setting ourselves up for failure because after a certain point, we put these people on pedestals and then we realize that, oh, they're human just like we are. They're flawed. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so they, true. They, 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 they have the issues we have, the disappointments, the insecurities, the doubts, the baggage from past relationships, and oh, they're more like us than we realize, but in, they're, they're not going to be the hero who's going to save us or rescue us. And as we get older and get more and more set in our ways, the disappointment becomes greater and greater. So we have to reframe and look at love and relationships in a different way. And we have to forget the storybooks. We have to forget the courses and the gurus who are, who are teaching us tricks and and ways of learning how to flirt and, and rules about how often you have to date before you can do this and do that and all the shoulds and all of that and get back into the reality of who we really are as human beings. And one thing to, to really keep in mind is that love is the process of being with another human being who is also in their process. And that allows 
Oh, absolutely. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> that let- yeah, absolutely. That's that. It's. I just want to shout out, Amen, sister. Oh, thank you, Preach thank it. You. Yeah, that allows us. <laughs> it gives us permission to know we're with a person, another flawed human being, and it gives us permission to be an authentic human being too. We're we're all doing our best, and we all screw up, and so we're not looking for that that Mister or Ms. Wright who is, is a knight on, in shining armor and the perfect, perfect person, because they don't exist. We're looking for someone who's compatible and fits well with us. And they're not going to be a perfect fit or a clone. So the good news is instead of being the, um, focusing on the partner that you want, Focus on being the partner, the best partner you can be, and focus more of your attention on loving and valuing yourself first, because you can't get into a healthy and successful relationship if you bring a lack of love and appreciation for yourself. When you do, you inevitably become a magnet for other people who are going to feed on your insecurities and your wounds and your failures and the the neediness that that comes from lack of self-esteem. So stop and do the inner work first, and it'll pay off in in the rewards of really attracting a valuable person to you. And the really good news is self-love is love that you don't have to get dressed up for. (laughs) That's good. I like that. So, So when you're working on yourself and boosting your confidence and self-esteem and thinking about the attributes you have and the value you have to, to give to a potential partner, the more you, you can just understand the fact that feeling good about yourself and loving yourself is an inside job. Doesn't matter how your hair looks, what style clothing you're wearing, it just means that you, you get reach a point when you know you have value. I'm a great person. I'm a great catch. If you don't believe it, why would anyone else believe it? You can't trick them into believing it if you don't believe it about yourself. So that's why we have to stop. And then especially after breakups, after a divorce, after a breakup, after a heartbreak, you need to stop and, and refuel and re-explore the part you played in the role you played in the breakup in the marriage, in the divorce, in the situation. Why did you choose that person? What would you do differently? What are you looking for that's different this time? You know, Rick, so many people end up leaving one relationship and finding another partner with a different face, but it's the same person just with a different face and they go through the same pattern again because we get into those types, our patterns. And and we're not getting anywhere. So an empowered person knows the important, most important relationship in life is your relationship with yourself, because that's the one you're taking with you everywhere you go. You can't leave it. You can't divorce it. So we have to start there. And only then can you attract a really healthy, meaningful, lasting love relationship with another person. And I want you to read just a, a short couple of sentences I wrote this book, uh, 99 Things Women Wish They Knew Before Dating After 40, 50, and yes, 60. And I have a, a sentence here that says, when you're busy leading your revitalized life, you don't need a relationship. You're just more likely to attract one, especially a relationship that honors and complements all the qualities that make you, you. Um, and that's a really pivotal point to keep in mind. We'll, we'll try to try to redo this again. Um, this is, I, I was afraid that you were, I was going to lose you here because of, of uh, the, uh, some, some technical stuff going on in the background. It sounded like uh, we were losing the connection. So if you can click on the, um, if you can click on the, uh, the call in button again, there we go. So there should we you continue? Are. 
Oh, okay. Oh, absolutely, okay. absolutely. I, I, I didn't, I didn't stop the recording. We're gonna, we're gonna include the, in, include the technical okay. errors we're, and all the we're stuff. So keep rocking moving and rolling. Forward. I like that. Good. Good. Absolutely. So what I thought we'd do to, tonight is talk about the damaging lies that singles tell themselves because we sabotage ourselves by the self-talk that that we have. Yep. And if it's, if it's destructive or if it's erroneous and not really true, then no wonder we end up with disappointing relationships because we're not really open to a healthy relationship. So let's explore some of these things. And if, if any of them resonate for you who are listening on the show, then jot down some notes and think about this because if you catch yourself in one or more of these lies, you can make a shift instantly and your whole life will transform just as a result of acknowledging that. So one of the first and biggest uh, um, lies that I hear from, from uh, clients is that all the good men or all the good women are already taken. Everyone out there who's worthwhile and good or married or in a relationship, there's just nothing out there but yeah. just garbage. <laughs> yeah. I love that one. Can I, a, can you mind if I insert something means. here? And, and my response to that, because I'm in the Kansas City area, I always come back with there are over 800,000 singles over age 35 in the Kansas yes. City metro area. If you uh, if you just assume that that only one half of one percent fits your criteria and we cut that number in half because about half are women and half are men. That means that you've got about 2,000 men prospects. or 2,000 women just uh, prospects yeah. just in the in, 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 in my area, the Kansas City metro area, that, that meet That's your right. desires. And, you know, so how many of those 2,000 have right. you dated? Thank you, Rick. Yeah. That, I, love, I love your sharing those numbers because it just brings it back to reality. So, it, you know, that becomes a way of sort of pacifying ourselves. It becomes a justification for not caring, not exerting energy, or for justifying the fact that, see, I told you, there was, we, I went to that event, there was no one good out there, and then we move on. And, and if it becomes a belief, then it becomes our truth. Because the, the, the truth is right. we only live in our own reality. So if we start believing it, it becomes our reality, and it's true for you. Doesn't mean it's true for the, the guy or gal next to you, because they have a different feeling. But if you're walking around with that belief system, then you're going to make sure unconsciously that you never meet someone good. The truth is that there's no shortage yep. of qualified, decent, worthwhile, eligible partners out there. New ones come on board every day due to certain circumstances. Even George Clooney was yep. available until recently. <laughs> you know, <laughs> exactly yes. right. So, so that isn't the truth. But they're not going to come knocking on your door without an invitation. They're not out there looking around for you and your name. You have to be out there. And if your standards are such that you require your ideal mate to be perfect, well, then you're going to be disappointed, unless you yourself are perfect. And I haven't yet met anyone like that. So we have to be willing to risk some involvement and some emotional engagement with other people. And we have to get make decisions to do things differently than we have in the past in order to get out there, be in different places, show up in a different way, have a different approach to things, and expect something good to happen. Otherwise, we're, we're just walking around it, letting that belief own us. Another really damaging yeah. Well, uh, do you have any other comments before we, we move on beyond that one? I was, I was just, I was, <clears throat> yes, thank you. I was going to add that I was just having a conversation with a friend about this very thing. And she, she was complaining that she can't find anybody. There's nobody around. There's, there's nobody here. And, you know, in questioning her, she refuses to, to number one, mm -hmm. change her belief. But number two, she re refuses to change her routines in where she looks, what okay. she does. She has a, a, a set hobby.
hobby, that um, that is her life. And um, with that, she doesn't, she's not able to explore or does not allow herself to explore um, outside of that hobby, you know, and, and that hobby happens to be dancing. So she's at the, at the dance studio three, four, or five times a week. And, you know, you're limiting yourself to just those people that That's are right. in that, in that, in that situation. So until she's willing to um, explore different options, change the possibilities of, of where she, what she does every night, um, She's going to be yes. stuck in and that And you pattern. know that that adage is so true. If you keep doing the same thing again and again, you get the same results, and that's insanity. We, we are most that's of us right. walking around are insane human beings because we get so rigid and stuck in certain ways, even if they're not fulfilling and satisfying and rewarding in any way, but we do it because that's what we do. <laughs> so you and I that's are here right. to shake we people don't. up tonight. That's right. That's absolutely right. Um, yeah. So yeah, it, it's, it is amazing. And, and I, I always go back to Henry Ford. He says, if you believe you can, or you believe you can't, exactly. you're right. I, I love that as well. And it's so, it sum, sums up everything we've been talking about. So another uh, belief that's very damaging, that another lie that singles tell themselves is I already had my one shot at love. And that's particularly true for someone who may be a widow or a widower, someone who had a great love early yeah. on, and then for whatever reason, it, they lost it. And they just have this futility, this feeling of there's nothing that can compare. Why even bother? And of course, that's another belief system that confines and defines and keeps you stuck in, in a mental state. If it actually, if you found love once, then you certainly are capable of finding it again. It may not be the same party. It may not be someone who has the exact same interests or the same looks as, as your first love. But that doesn't mean you can't be in love and find a deep, fulfilling, rich love with another person. People are amazingly diverse and there's wonderful traits that they have. All we have to do is be open and receptive to finding someone. But we have to watch what we tell ourselves. The, the biggest way we sabotage ourselves in every facet of our lives is telling ourselves stories, and I'll call them stories, that, that are right. erroneous, not true, not justifiable, not, not provable. They're, they're just what we tell ourselves. So you have to recognize that you can be a magnet for love again, but your energy has to be filled with loving thoughts and beliefs that, that you are open and receptive to it. So it's up to you. Like everything else, it's an inside job. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> because you've, you've heard these same th things from clients. I know that. Oh, I, 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 I yes. do hear these same things. And, and the one thing that I've come to realize is, is that if you've had an extraordinary relationship and it ended typically through the, the loss of a spouse, um, the, the, you know, I, again, we just look at some of the simple numbers of the Kansas City metro area, and are you, you would have to tell me that that you know of the of the eight hundred thousand people here, are you saying that you really cannot find somebody that's going to be compatible with you uh, that you can fall in love with? Uh, now, and like you said, the love will Different. be the the, the 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 connection will the. The connection will be the same. I mean, from the standpoint that you'll have that deep, that deep love for each other, but it's going to be different because you're with a different. And I person. know, as as I've grown in age, my the the person and the type of person and the values and qualities I'm looking for have changed. So you may have had a wonderful love affair in, in your 30s, but you may be at a point now when you're looking at life differently. And, and you would be attracting someone different anyway because you have different values and beliefs or you're looking ahead into your retirement years and the, the things that you want to be doing. So 
you're not the same person you were then, and you can find a partner who's going to compliment you now. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so, so what's my, your next? Well, point? the next, the next belief, erroneous belief that we sabotage ourselves with is looking for love is not worth the trouble. I know you've heard that one as well. And the truth is dating is tough and you, it's very easy to get frustrated and reach a point when it's just, it's not worth the effort. It's too much energy, too much time, too much money. And I'm just spinning my wheels, wasting my time. But there's, there's something about the attitude and the belief and the expectations that you have that affect the outcome you're getting. Having a technical issue. Yeah, Rosalind, we're, we're, I just lost you for your, I, I've got your picture, but I've, I've, I've lost your voice. Oh. So um, I'm going to, okay, there you're back again. I am. So, oh. Uh, you are. <laughs> right. We're rocking, we're rocking and rolling again. Okay. Uh, we had private, we had private man join us. Welcome. Uh, we've got Rosalind Sadaka on, uh, on tonight. And uh, would you repeat that last um uh, Yes. The, uh, would you repeat the that The damaging last, lie uh, that singles frequently tell themselves. The last one is looking for love is not worth the trouble. And I'm saying that when we have a belief system that, that that's so, then we just close the door to finding someone and we look at it as exhausting and not worthwhile. But the truth is that with every date and every relationship and everything you do, you can be getting one step closer to finding the, the person that really is exciting for you. And you never know when and where they're going to come, but you need an expectation that it's going to happen because if you have these erroneous beliefs that it's not going to happen, that there's no one worthwhile out there, that all the good ones are taken and that it isn't worth the trouble, then that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. That becomes your reality, your truth. And if that's what you believe, you're going to create that. And so what Rick and I are trying to do is shake up some of those beliefs so that you start fresh and new and start realizing that relationships are an inside job. They don't just happen to you and knock you over. You have to be in a mindset and have a consciousness of excitement and anticipation an expectation because there are miraculously wonderful people out there and you can attract one, but you have, you can only attract them if you have a mindset that's going to be attracting someone who's healthy, conscious, and aware. So you have to remind yourself that you're on the path to finding love and nothing's going to get in your way. And that dating is a process and be in it to win it, but don't, think of every failed date or relationship as meaning that this is the end of the line for you because it isn't. And it, 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 exactly. Um, I'm going to jump in here real quick, Rosalind. And uh, we have a question from Alex who just, who just joined us. And the question is define love. And at what point did you start loving yourself? Um, if you want to go ahead and take that, I and then I'll jump in afterwards and and uh, we'll go from there. Love, love is a feeling that we want to share outside of ourselves. When when we are, it, love is is a feeling that opens our hearts, and when our hearts are open, we are more receptive and open to good. We are more tolerant, we are more receptive. And so things that may have happened in another state, when we were in a state of love, it just looks and feels different. And that state of love is something that comes from the inside out. Another person doesn't do it to us or make us feel in love. It seems that way, but it starts from the inside out. And so we want to feel love in as many ways as we can. And then you want to expect love and, and look for someone who is loving with you. And what was the other half of that question? The other part of that question is, and at what point did you oh. start loving yourself? Well, I've been working on myself. I've been a student of personal growth my whole life. I started in my early 20s and I've never stopped. 
And I found at, at in my 40s is when I really started loving myself and, and realizing my value that I didn't have to compare myself with anyone else, that I had wonderful traits. And I used to, I remember years ago, I used to stop and hug myself from time to time when, when I did something well or I thought some good thoughts or, I, or someone complimented me. I would acknowledge myself. And I, th I think part of the process is being your best parent, parenting yourself so that you give yourself the same kind of attaboy uh, and affection that you would give to your child. If you could stop and give that to yourself, it puts you on the path towards valuing yourself, loving yourself. And that is just so important. And there's many different steps and processes that you could do with a, a therapist, a coach, uh, in a group, in a course, mm -hmm. to help you through to open the door to more and more self-love. And that's not an ego thing of saying, I'm greater than anyone else. It just means I'm worthy of being here and I'm proud of who I am in my skin, in my body, as I am now. I'm a great person. And if you don't believe that, how could you go out and meet someone new and expect them to fall in love with you when you have self-doubts. That's why it's so important to do that inner work first. When you believe you're great and worthy of attraction, everything shifts and changes. And that's why we see couples where you say, how did she get that great guy or the opposite? How did he get that, that gorgeous woman? Because there's more to it than looks. There's something we exude in energy that attracts other people to us. And that's, absolutely. that's what we want to be doing. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Rosalind, I, my journey has not been as long as yours. I've only been a student of self and relationship improvement for about the last 28 years. Um, <laughs> uh, but and and my my big transition came about um, seven years ago, and when I when I finally got to a point where, yeah, I am okay, I am a good guy, and and I am worthy, uh, and you know I I lived with some things in in my past. Uh, and it, from family issues that that at finally at, at at age 52 I overcame, but that was only through the study and mm -hmm. and through the help of of some very good friends that uh, triggered some thoughts and made me realize, yeah, I am okay. Uh, so so Alex, I hope that answered your question. Um, if not, you know, keep asking away. Uh, we're more than happy to answer your questions for you. So, yes. uh, Rosalind, uh, what other points? Okay. Um, yes. There we've, we got a yes. Got... Thank you. Great. I'm glad. <laughs> Good. Good. We've we've got Go another ahead. big one here. I know you'll relate to another damaging, self-sabotaging lie. All men are liars, cheats, and players. All women are gold diggers, manipulators, or too smothering. <laughs> Everyone, when you're, when you're feeling frustrated and, and annoyed and angry about dating and relationship, you come up with these blatant stereotypical statements. And of course, the, the truth is that some men are liars, cheats, and players, and some women are gold diggers and manipulators or smothering. But all, no. The, if, you're, if you are constantly attracting yeah. that type, then you are definitely needing to stop and do some inner processing before you move ahead because you were just in a pattern. And it's not that all of one gender are any way. It's just that the people in your world that you are attracting with your energy are like that. And you shift your energy, you'll shift who comes into your world. Exactly. And, and I, I just had a workshop last night that we talked about this very thing. And it's a matter of uh, what we discussed was focusing on positive aspects as opposed to focusing on the negative. If you're focusing on, on all men are cheaters or all women are gold diggers, then guess what exactly. you're going to attract? Get going to be. Yeah. 
the gold diggers or the cheaters or the liars or, right. or, or whatever they are. And Rick, you look for evidence to support that viewpoint and, and we'll do anything to find the evidence. See, I told you. See, look, look, you see? We're having oh. a tech. There Am I back? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Go ahead and go so, ahead and state that when, again. When you, we, you broke that up there. Men a or, bit. Or, or are terrible, or all women are, are terrible. Then you look for evidence that your viewpoint is correct, and then you find it is proof. See, I told you. Look, look what she said. Look what he did. And the proof is everywhere because it's in your world. Those are the people you're attracting, hanging with. Those are the friends of your friends. That's the universe that you're in. So we need what you said is so true. You need to start looking for examples of quality men, quality women, and suddenly it all shifts. I have never been with one a guy like that. No matter whether I was in a successful or failed relationship, they were all fine men, good men, quality men. We may not have been lifelong mates, but I was never involved with someone who did that to me because. I had done the work so that I wasn't attracting. You know what it is? Your red flag warning signs go up earlier. So yes, you bump into all types, but immediately your radar says danger, 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 player, 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 manipulator, I don't want this. And in the first date or the second date, or just when you meet them at a party, you know this is not for me rather than hanging in and hanging in and then saying, well, maybe they'll change or this is the best I can get. That's when you get stuck into a situation that's really painful and dangerous. And, and, and you just brought up one of the, one of the, the big limiting beliefs that I hear is that I can't find anyone better or I won't find anyone better. I'm staying here. He has a lot of great qualities or she has a lot of great qualities, but there's a couple of things that drive me crazy. But if I leave, yes. I'm afraid there's nobody out there that will be better. And I'm here to tell you <laughs> there will always be somebody better. There will always be somebody better unless you are with your soulmate or in, in an extraordinary relationship. If you don't believe in the soulmate concept, I use extraordinary relationship uh, interchangeably. But if you are in that kind of a relationship, then there's no need to look. You already have that person. But if you're in a relationship where there are doubts or whether whether, you know, there's something that that that's that's there that that's just not not clicking with you then it's time to um, time to think about moving on and, and finding yeah, that right totally person agree. and doing it sooner rather than later is, 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 is preferable because um, you know, I think, you know, what I teach my clients is that in that first 30 days, you should be able to see enough of the red flags that you can make a decision very quickly uh, whether to pursue a relationship or not. If you're not seeing any red flags in that first 30 days, then it might be somebody worth pursuing. Doesn't mean there won't be red flags that come later on, but at least it's somebody that's 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 worth taking a look at. But if they're not, if you're seeing red flags from the first day yeah. or first couple of dates, you know, then it's time to move on. Let's not waste time and 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 energy in a relationship that will ultimately not go anywhere. Um, we've got a quick a quick comment here from. Um, from uh, Man Private, the uh, the dilemma with with players is that they are charming, charismatic, and attractive. Yes, they are, and that is that is a problem with them. Uh, however, they will send out their red flags. Uh, and, and can I add? Probably sooner than later. I just want uh, to add one. You point just have to and, and that yeah, go ahead, Rosalind. We need to learn to trust that inner voice because we all get that gut feeling. Too often we push it aside because we're either smitten or we're insecure. Yeah. We don't want to rock the boat. We think this is the best we're going to get anyway. We're flattered. Whatever the reason is, we don't hear the warning. And then the warning is a little louder. And then a little louder, and then finally, when yep. it clobbers you over the, over the head, very often you're in serious trouble, and it's much harder to get out of a damaging relationship, yes. especially an abusive relationship, than it is to stop early on and say, "That's not the type of person I want to be with. I'm out of my comfort zone." 
even if they're attractive and, and, and seem so delightful and charming, if, if your gut feeling is telling you differently, trust your gut feeling, you won't, you won't, you won't, regret, you won't regret it. So there's another. Absolutely. I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. Thank you. There's another damaging lie that I, I wanted to get into, and that's I'm too, and you could fill in the blank, picky, heavy, old, disabled, whatever, to find a good love partner. You know, as, as we age, we start finding these things that make us too undesirable to find a love partner. Who's going to want to date someone my age when there are younger, prettier, better, you know, more fit people out there? Who's going to want someone like me who doesn't have this or doesn't have that? And, and we, we, again, tear ourselves down and, and create this energy where we really start dis disapproving of ourselves. And I want to share a very, very important thought even worthy of, of taking notes about, and that is no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. No one can make you feel inferior without your consent. Actually, First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt said that way back in the 40s, 1940s, but it's a very valid statement. And if you keep that in mind, it reinforces the fact that we have to buy into the negativity that we're telling ourselves, otherwise it doesn't stick. So we have to listen to what we're telling ourselves, watch our thoughts and cancel them out and replace them with a healthier belief, a healthier thought. Because we've all seen couples where someone is older or fatter or, or uglier or whatever we want to call it. And yet there they are in a relationship, happy, desirable, thriving, and, and loved by another party. Love is not about your physical attraction. Love, love is about other things. And if you have a belief that someone is going to find you and love you for who you are, then that's going to happen. So the, the biggest gift you could give yourself is working on that so that you can start changing the beliefs and start catching yourselves when you're telling yourself these lies because they are doing you no good and there's so much more that you can do to support yourself. Don't you think, Rick? Oh, absolutely. I think our... Oh, absolutely. Uh, I think our the, this self-talk... Um, we can create so many limiting beliefs. Um, just the yeah, in, in in my seminars, I share those very things that I'm I'm too I I'm not smart Wealthy enough. Enough. I'm not tall enough. I'm not short enough. I'm not blonde enough. I'm not you know whatever poor. it is. I'm too uh, yeah. you, you know yeah. I'm too poor. I'm not right. Uh, uh, you know who would want me. And yeah, you get you get into that the, into that frame of mind, and you set yourself it's a negative up for spiral for too. permanent it, you failure. Just keep going down uh, deeper and deeper and deeper into a hole. And and, and and it's like we talked about earlier that it it becomes a fulfilling belief, and you know until you until you can change your paradigm or your shift your your thinking, um, you will continually to. Yeah continually spiral downward uh and you know just uh, and and i cannot overemphasize how correct you are in in uh chain making that shift it is it is it has a huge dynamic change on virtually and everybody the good news that i've is worked with it uh, isn't that it, difficult it may feel difficult at this moment if it hasn't been part of your game plan but it, it really is about making a few little yes. shifts and changes and catching yourself thinking things that you might have been thinking because we're all creatures of habit. Catching yourself and saying, oh, I just caught myself mm -hmm. thinking something negative about myself and changing it, replacing that thought. And suddenly things around you shift because everything is energy. And we are attracting with our energy the experiences that are happening in our lives and the people in our lives. 
So that's the good news because this is something that can be undone. This isn't a sentence that you're living for the rest of your life. This is something that can be changed and shifted. And the quickest, easiest shift is to at least shift what you're doing and where you're going and who you're with when you go out in dating and relationships. If you hang out with the same two or three gals or guys and you always go to the same places together, change that. Change the people you're with, change the places you go to, change the times. Think about the things that really give you joy rather than looking for dating partners. Look for things that you love that are fulfilling for you and do those things because very often you'll meet someone when you least expect them. Mm -hmm. And you'll also meet some, become best friends with someone who happens to have a brother or a cousin or a friend who's a perfect person for you. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and it's just making those minor little changes. Um, as we, for a couple of you that missed it early on, um, we talked about a, a conversation I had with a friend of mine that, that refused to make uh, changes in her daily life to, uh, to try to find the man of her dream. She's frustrated because he just doesn't show up at, at the, uh, at, at the, uh, the, uh, the dance, I, I want to call it a dance hall, but the, the, uh, the dance studio, uh, because she loves to dance. And if he's not showing up there, um, she's disappointed, but she doesn't open herself up to the possibilities of, of doing something different, um, going someplace different, being with some, with different people to expose her to, to greater and possibilities. You could of even meet man someone who's dreams. a great dancer when you're in, a, in a, a class or a lecture or a concert or doing <laughs> something else anyway. So yeah, it just, <laughs> exactly. It doesn't right. necessarily you mean you have to be at the ballroom as much as possible. I, I'd love to um, take a moment just to share with, with our um, viewers, the, um, invite them to, to uh, get a free ebook that I have on the most asked questions for um, oh, dating success, answers for women and answers for men. And for the women, if you go to the website, Women Dating After 40, which is 40, womendatingafter40.com, just put your email address right there and it'll instantly come to you. It's really filled with great tips and answers to the kinds of questions we've been talking about tonight. And for the men, if you send me an email at info at women dating after four zero, I'll send you the, men, the version for men as well. So even though the email address says women in it, we're gonna send you the men's version. That's info at women dating after four zero dot com. And we'll get the, that ebook to, to anyone who's interested in um, learning more and checking that out. And I also have a men's dating program at men's, mensdatingformula.com and a women's dating program at womendatingrescue.com. So there's lots of valuable information for those of you who like online classes and courses or coaching directly from me. Very good. Yeah. And uh, private man uh, made a comment here. The Air Force is not parachuting in I like that. Prince Charming. <laughs> um, absolutely. You've got to go. You've got to put in a little effort to go out and find him or her, um, whichever the case may be. So, uh, yeah, that's that's absolutely true. Uh, and that is one of the things that I found is that that the the more effort yes. you put in, the luckier you're going to be. Um, <laughs> there's, there's one more, so, more thing I uh, wanted to share before we Ron, leave, because I think this is, this is so important. I, I leave it for yeah. last because I want everyone to take it away and contemplate and even write this down. Rather than asking, what do I want in a relationship? Ask yourself, how do I want to feel? Instead of asking, what do I want? Which is the typical thing we see in all the programs and courses and people are writing down the qualities. Ask yourself, how do yeah. I want to feel? 
Because if you focus on that, you're naturally going to go for someone who makes you feel good, someone who treats you with respect, someone who values your qualities and attributes, someone who's fun to be with, someone that you're compatible with, someone you get along with most of the time so that you're laughing and enjoying yourself. You know, relationships aren't supposed to be drama. Even though our TV shows and movies are all filled with drama, some people grow up thinking a relationship is supposed to be drama. It isn't. Relationships are supposed to be smooth and harmonious right. and easy most of the time. And, and even when there are bumps and conflicts, there are skills to make those bumps and conflicts work out so that you're not, your heart isn't broken every other day. And so you want to think about how you want to feel right. in a relationship. And if you haven't been feeling valued and respected and loved in your most recent relationships, then you really want to make a shift tonight and make a change. Because when you're looking for that, you're going to be getting a totally different outcome than what you've been experiencing before. And that'll make a wonderful change in your life. Yeah, that's that's absolutely true, and that's a, that is a huge point that that um, we all search for the feeling, you know. Uh, but uh, un, un, unfortunately, we focus on on Height characteristics and weight and color or of hair and, you know, and crazy things. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Now, now, I'm not going to take take away that some of those things are important to us. Um, but I still think it's, it's the feeling and, and this goes back to, um, oh gosh, 30, 30 some years ago when I was reading a book on marketing and the, the, the author said, nobody yes. wants a quarter inch drill bit. That's right. They want a quarter inch hole that the, that the drill bit makes. And the same thing applies to relationships. What are the feelings that you want? Do you, you want that extraordinary that that extraordinary feeling that you're loved unconditionally, and that that you're that you are loving unconditionally back, and uh, you know those are the things that we need to focus on. And then back, you know, for yes. me, it, it it we back up from there, and then figure out yes. what are the characteristics that get us there. So, so, uh, Rosalind, we're we're mm -hmm. coming coming to the end of the hour, and. Uh, any anything else that you'd like to well, add? I just want to suggest uh, that reaching other... out and getting the help from a coach is a really wise way to expedite matters and make things happen for you much more quickly. So that we're in 2016 and we're in March. Within a few months, your life can be totally changed, and in, in everything about the way you feel about yourself and who you're with and what's happening for you and your future looking really bright. And so. Don't be afraid to reach out for help. Get the support you need because if you could do it yourself or to date, you would have. Sometimes just getting that extra help makes all the difference in the world and take advantage. And boy, Rick's a, a fabulous guy who knows so much about relationships. So you're in good hands with him. And um, I know you'll be in good hands with me. And there's other wonderful people out there. Choose wisely, but get get the support you need because it'll just make things happen for you so much more quickly. Absolutely. And, and a lot of times I found it's just the yeah. accountability um, of, of working through, working through issues with somebody and having somebody to share that with and say, okay, uh, Rosalind, this is, this is where you're at. This is where you want to go. This is the course that you need to set. And then mm -hmm. you're checking in on a regular basis. Yeah, Rosalind, I've, I've loved getting to know you and, and um, <laughs> we have so much in common. We share so many of the same ideas and, and theories. You know, there are so many, for lack of better terms, there are so many scammers out there that, you know, they want to teach you the tricks, the tips, the, the you know when I was when I was authoring my co-authoring my book dating backward, we looked at the shelf uh, on on dating and and there's not a lot of great material on how to find that right relationship. It's about how to how to get your exactly. boyfriend back, how to get your girlfriend right. back. 
It's how to trick them into coming back, how to trick them into loving you. And really, how are you going to feel when you find out you've been tricked, you've been duped? You, if, 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 if they've left you to begin with, um, the odds are that reason hasn't changed. Yes. Who and, wants them and back? To, they don't deserve you. Yeah. There's something better <laughs> for you. Yes. Exactly. That could be the greatest. The greatest. Exactly. Gift it's the it opens whole point. The door to someone wonderful coming in. That's right. And once that once that once that door of that that past relationship yes. is closed, keep it closed. Uh, one of the things that I find is that we tend to we get lonely. Um, we look for that comfortable relationship and we drift back to somebody that knows us, we can talk to. And pretty soon you open that door um, and you're back in a relationship again that's that's not healthy. It's not right. I mean, yeah. it may not be terrible, but it's not the right And weeks, months, and years go by wasted you. because you're not being fulfilled. Exactly. Yes. And life is precious. Time is precious. And there's no point in being in a relationship that that's that's not fulfilling, not extraordinary as I is or with not being with your soulmate. Um, I know some of you out there may not believe in that, but I've been there. I know it. I have felt it. I you know, it, it's just uh, the soulmate relationship is is very real to me. So anyway, um, we're going to wrap things up here. Um, again, uh, as you can see, I'm Rick Sodebeer, and we've got Rosalind Sadaka with us today. And uh, one lady girl, you're very welcome for the information. We're, we're so glad to, to be here and, and share it with you. Uh, again, if, if you have questions, you can. can contact either yes it looks like we are did you get that rosalind uh, i i didn't hear my yeah. email do, do you want to give your email address or yeah. uh rosalind writes at gmail.com r-o-s-a-l-i-n-d-w-r-i-t-e-s at gmail.com or info at women dating at after four zero dot com. Either way, we'll get to me. Happy to chat with you. Very, very good. And uh, my my website is love for a lifetime. That's L U V the number four a lifetime dot com. You can check out um, all my information there. Uh, my coaching services. You can. Uh, I've got a couple of freebies there. The uh, the five biggest mistakes singles make while dating. Um, you can also check out the uh, read the first chapter of my book, uh, and then uh, keep an eye open for a. Uh, we're we're in the process of putting together a uh, a uh, a video coaching session uh, that that will be available in the next couple of weeks. So that'll, that'll be fun and exciting. Um, Rosalind, it's been great. I've um, I'm sorry for the technical difficulties, yeah. but a lot. Of <laughs> and uh, uh, I appreciate your time tonight and sharing with us uh, the great information. And uh, again, I've loved getting to know you and, and we are so much on the same page and, and I, if there's I feel anything well. that I can do for you in the future, please let me know. Absolutely. And uh, I, I enjoy working with you. Thank you. I appreciate your invitation to join you tonight. It's been a pleasure. Wishing everyone who's watching and listening a successful, loving relationship soon. Thanks, Rosalind, and uh, good night to everybody, and uh, we'll see you all next week when we have, and uh, we're going to have a good conversation then. Bye-bye now. Rosalind, have a good night, and we'll talk to you soon.